His name is Cleveland Brown, and do not worry, I'm not going to sing the whole song, but it is pretty catchy. <laughs> Cleveland started off as Peter Griffin's unassuming sidekick, and much to everyone's surprise, he spun off into a series all on his own. What the hell? He's getting his own show? But as such, we've seen him do a lot of things throughout the years, and I'll be going through it all today. From meeting his best friend Peter, to getting divorced and moving out of Quahog, starting a new life with Donna and her kids in Virginia, and well, moving back to Quahog all over again. Oh, hey Cleveland. Oh, wait, don't you have a show to do? Oh, that's right. I'm also gonna go into the mystery of his son Junior and explain his drastic change. So stick around to find out the horrifying truth, as I'm Lydia from Screen Portal and this is the complete timeline of Cleveland Brown. But first, do me a favour and click that like and subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm, otherwise YouTube isn't going to push this video. So go on, tap those buttons, it takes a fraction of a second, it's free, and as a very special thank you, here is a very cute picture of a bunny. Anyway, thank you so much and let's get on with the video. Growing up in Stoolbent Fans of Family Guy knew Cleveland as a resident of Quahog, Rhode Island, but that's not where Cleveland actually grew up. He's originally from the even more unfortunately named Stoolbend, Virginia. Cleveland went to Stoolbend High School and had a major crush on a girl called Donna, but she was already going out with a jerk called Robert Tubbs. After high school, he wouldn't see Donna again until he returned to his hometown many years later, but more on that later in the video. Now, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the Family Guy continuity is all over the place, as such, Cleveland has two backstories. In the season 19 episode, Tales of Former Sports Glory, Cleveland says that he was actually born in Cuba. He was a baseball prodigy and dreamt of one day playing in the big leagues, and when he got older, he was chosen to play on Cuba's national team. And he also moonlighted as a band leader. When he wasn't hitting home runs or singing the house down, he dreamt of a life in America. To him and his baseball team built a raft and travelled to the States. He then signed a contract with the Toronto Blue Jays, but being from a hot country, he couldn't handle the cold Canadian climate. None of this really makes any sense considering what we know now. And it wouldn't surprise me if Cleveland made that story up just to look good in front of the boys. Almost likely, the writers didn't care about continuity. Anyway, what we do know is that he moved to Quahog after breaking up with his girlfriend Maxine, and this is where he met Peter Griffin for the very first time. So where is it that you need to go, my new honky friend? Now, to give a bit of context, Peter had been dumped into the sea by his girlfriend's dad, and after being rescued by Quagmire, he slowly makes his way back to Lois. And looking to hitch a ride, Cleveland offers him a lift. After this, Peter gets Cleveland a job at the country club, and the two quickly become the best of friends. And they even have a pretty awesome handshake. Now on the other side of the pool. A couple of years after this situation, Cleveland, Peter and Quagmire moved to the city and rented an apartment altogether. But it was about time the three of them settled down, and so they all returned to Quahog, Rhode Island, and brought houses right next to each other on Spooner Street. Cleveland is known for his slow drawl, but he was actually a quick talker back in the day, which made him the perfect auctioneer, but when he was knocked on the head by a totem pole, it permanently slowed his speech. Do I hear 135, 140, do I hear 140? B. 135 going once. Cleveland's marriage to Loretta. Back in Quahog, Cleveland opened up his own deli and married a lady called Loretta. They had a son called Cleveland Brown Jr., who was the complete opposite of his father. He was slim and hyperactive, with a short attention span, too. I'm Tiger Woods! I'm Tiger Woods! Whee! 
And we rarely saw Junior again until him and his dad packed up and moved away to Quahog. Junior had changed drastically as he had gained a bit of weight and talked far slower. When am I gonna get hair around my grits? Oh, you'll get there, Cleveland Junior. A far cry from the version of the kid fans got to know on Family Guy. This was left unexplained for a long time until the season 4 Cleveland Show episode, Rodent Like This. So it turns out that Junior is an agent for a top secret organization and he was selected to be Cleveland's child for a mission. As such, he abducted the original Junior and took his place instead. He reveals that Stallbend is a hotspot for enemy agents and he has been quietly taking out terrorists on the side. Yeah, really. But come on, hold your horses, Lydia. I'm getting far too ahead of myself. And we've jumped forward a bit too far. So let's reverse back to Cleveland's life in Quahog. When Family Guy began, Cleveland was a relatively happily married man. Relatively being the key word here, because the relationship he had with Loretta was never particularly fulfilling for either of them. Cleveland Brown, you are pathetic. I disagree, but I respect your candor. While they fought frequently, it was Loretta who caused their split by cheating on Cleveland with one of his closest friends, Quagmire. What was that? Shut up and put some more of that sugar in my bowl. Now a bachelor, Cleveland plays the field and he's got some game too. Unapologetically snatching Brian's girl right from under his nose. Oh, hey, Brian. Close that window. You're letting all the stank out. This is also where we hear his catchphrase, which he can't help but yell after doing the nasty. Wait. Ow! Oh, and boom goes the dynamite. At the request of Brian, Loretta would eventually try to reconcile with Cleveland. And as much as I still have a great deal of love for you, our time is over. Moving back to Stoolbend. The move from Quahog to Stoolbend was actually initiated by Loretta, who had become petty and vindictive during their divorce. And so she eventually took ownership of her former Quahog home with Cleveland. The tragic irony of this situation was that by her taking the ownership of the house directly led to her death. Had she just stayed away from the house and the neighborhood, she would never have been caught in Peter's path of destruction. Now, living next to the Griffins is a pretty dangerous place to be. When Peter's not tearing up Joe's garden with his Petercopter, he's destroying Cleveland's house with his wacky, wacky antics. And weirdly, Cleveland always seems to be in the bath when this happens. No, 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 no! Loretta learned this the hard way when Peter dropped a dinosaur skeleton right through her roof. Still, anyway, Cleveland and Cleveland Jr. hit the road, making a stopover in Stoolbend so he could relive some glory days from his youth. But a chance to encounter his high school crush changed his plans of moving to California and he planted his roots firmly in his hometown. Marrying his high school crush. Cleveland first met Donna back in Stoolbend High School, and despite being relatively popular in the good old days, he still couldn't get the attention of Donna. She was involved with Robert Tubbs, a perpetual party animal throughout high school and well into his adulthood too. Donna ended up marrying him and having two kids, Roberta and Rallo. Oh, okay, we're having fat people stay at our house now and nobody runs it by me? Sometime before Cleveland returned to Stoolbend, Robert and Donna got divorced. And so opening the door for Cleveland and Donna to reconnect and get married by the end of the first episode of The Cleveland Show. I present Mr. and Mrs. Cleveland Brown. <laughs> Becoming a stepfather. When Cleveland married Donna, he became the stepfather of her two kids too. As mentioned earlier, Donna had two children from her first marriage to Robert, who set the bar for parenting pretty low. Do you even know what grades they're in? The girl must be done with high school, right? 
And so it was relatively easy for Cleveland to prove himself to be a better father. Still, Cleveland had to put the work in too. You're a loser and your mustache is stupid. Roberta was 15 going on 22 when Cleveland moved in. She's definitely her own person and seems to actually cut Cleveland some slack. The upside for him is that she's old enough to understand just how terrible a person her biological father is and genuinely appears to prefer Cleveland more. Rallo, on the other hand, is an incredibly savvy five-year-old who doesn't take any crap from anyone. So, we good? Yeah, we good. Trying to reconnect with his father. LeVar Fright Train Brown would have been a very tough father to have. You still a broke ass little chump. And good morrow to you, father. He was an aspiring NFL player who didn't quite make the cut and so treated his family poorly as a result. He was especially rude and cruel to Cleveland, who he almost seemed to hate most of the time. It was later revealed that the reason why Fright Train dislikes Cleveland so much has to do with his son's failure on a TV game show. What makes this situation truly sad is that Cleveland is constantly searching for his father's approval. Haha, <laughs> this is fun, I'm having fun, we're having fun. What's even weirder is that Fright Train seems to have a stronger connection with Robert Tubbs. Your dad asked me to be his best man. What? But I'm your best man. Which says a whole lot about him. Cleveland returns to Quahog. The Cleveland show was cancelled after season four. So with that massive change, Cleveland, Donna and the rest of the family headed back to Quahog. First and foremost, Peter, Joe and Quagmire utterly annihilated the fourth wall by openly and repeatedly mocking the cancellation of the Cleveland show. You know, it's not a good sign that this is the first time a lot of people are realizing you had a show. And so Cleveland Brown moved his family back into the house he lived in with Loretta. The unintended side effect of this was that Donna and Lois hated each other. But that hasn't stopped Cleveland and Peter from being the best of buds. Secretly meeting up without their wives knowing. Hell, they are so in sync, they can actually swap skin pigments on a whim. But when Lois and Donna see how important their husband's friendship is, they make up. Friends. Friends. Since then, the two of them have even become close friends themselves. It looks like Cleveland and his family will be sticking around in Quahog for the time being, despite Peter continuing to destroy their house. No, 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 no! And so that completes the Cleveland Brown timeline. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the video and the channel for more Family Guy content. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.